Okay, um, for Christians, if they understand they have a graced name, and a graced name, it's opposite to legal. It's complete opposite. When we're talking about grace, we're talking about forgiveness. And in order to get through this, you're going to have to understand you have a forgiven name, and then a name, when joined together, that cannot be together, becomes a legal name, becomes a fiction or a lie. Because you can't put two things together that do not belong. But you would only be able to do that by your own consent. So we must forgive and forget, because get is a divorce in Hebrew. Now, you can check that out. Get us Hebrew. So forgive means um, to not hold any grudge, be completely um, charitable, showing love to your fellow man. The other one here, if you're going to forgive, you also have to forget. And uh, you have something in your name or in the name you may be using under your fictional journey um, that is part of what people are not forgetting, which is that surname which keeps track of everything, keeps track of all sins. That's why it has a sin number. We hope when you get through what we're about to talk about, you'll understand why there would be a constitutional exemption for Christians. So we're going to go into constitutional exemption out of the Canadian Law Dictionary. It was probably the, the, the simplest I read in a definition on this. Constitutional. Constitutional exemption. Now we have to understand the word exempt means that others would be made to do something that you would not be made to do if you were exempt. So exempt means not participating. We've heard about constant we've heard about conscientious objectors, but that is kind of an oxymoron anyways because constitutional uh, or con uh, conscientious objectors uh, believe they can still carry a form of war in their name, yet they say they're not going to bear a physical arms. But that's not true conscientious objection. That would be like a man standing with a gun in his hands claiming he's unarmed. It's just a lie. It does not work. Therefore, true conscientious objection would mean no arms of any sort. That means they would not be able to fill out any forms because democracy is a form of war because it uses arms. And it says that everybody is privately able to bear arms and your arms are in your surname or your armorial bearing or your on sign, whatever you want to call that name. It's an occupation name. It's a war name. It's not a peaceful name. One side is peace. The other side is war. So under constitutional exemption, it says a device, and a device is a gift, just so you know that. It's a gift which enables the court to uphold a law that is valid in most of its applications. The court does this by creating an exemption, declaring the law unconstitutional and invalid in their application to specific individuals or groups. So it's not there for everybody because it would not be fair because there's people that are going to participate, are going to be for hire, are going to bear arms, and you could not participate without those arms. And that's for those that wish to be in charge. They, don't, they do not believe in being subject to the higher powers and allowing the government to act as a father so they can go out and be charitable. They wish to operate their own affairs. They wish to be involved in adultery, and that's what an affair is. And that's why you go out to foreign affairs to take all your prostitution documents with you to another country to go and prostitute yourself for wages and war. 
And that's why the whole world is lying in the power of evil, a wicked one who wanted to be at war with the Father. Now, people have been talking about these birth certificates, and what a mix-up amount of manure is out there all over the net. That's why they call it the World Wide Web, because it's full of deceit. And there's many people deceiving you out there, because they want to believe that you could basically be involved in war, but really be at peace. Really be, have a good spell, the gospel, and uh, actually have a bad spell. One is good, one is evil. And in order to reverse evil, if you want to live, because you spell that backwards and we know devil, reversed, means lived, because the devil was once an angel who lived with God. So when we're talking about these documents, we have to understand what they mean. Well, this is charitable property. Because a miraculous thing came to our earth through Christ. God gave his only begotten son. He gave him. But only for those who exercise faith. That was his purpose. Those that had to exercise faith. If you do not exercise your Christian name, you don't have faith. And therefore, there is no purpose when it's mixed in the journey of the prodigal son who wants to be out there to run his own life away from God. So the government has the same thing in this, and this is only for those that are out for no profit, no gain. It's charitable property. It's for those that are exempt from duty, debt, and obligation. They are to owe no man anything but to love, and therefore this is only for love and for charity. It is not for a purpose of going out there to buy homes and expensive vehicles, so that you can go and flash wealth in front of your fellow man. It was there for grace, and it was only there for the government to be able to be in use of, for they're the signing authorities on this, not you. It may be, in a sense, a counterfeit token of value for the time being, because we know that the real reward happens when we reach our heavenly reward. But in the meantime, this is a token of value, because the government still holds the ordained power of God for those that wish to be Christian and charitable, but not for those that want to go out for profit. So many people for profit are trying to use these in some kind of paper terrorism against the government, and they're about to find out otherwise. Because they do not reflect Christ. These are not people that are actually talking about Christianity. And I'm not going to mention names, but they're all over CBC right now. There's many patriot groups down in the U.S. who believe it's okay to be a Christian and bear arms and uh, def defend their property. Well, God's the one that would do that. Christ didn't show that type of action. So, well, if Christ, our leader, was peaceful, how could we possibly be at war with the government? He died so you would have this constitutional exemption. And you will throw it all away and flush it down the toilet by being involved in any of these sovereignty groups, which is blasphemous against God, because God is only sovereign. He is the Lord of the land, not you. And when you try to claim ownership of anything, you're saying you're God, and you are not God. And you are not a Lord of any land. And he's soon going to fire all the tenants off the land, but that will be in his due time. But right now... You are obligated by conscience to subject yourself to the higher powers because how could you expect a remedy under grace that Christ died for you if you are going to try to do it yourself? Now, when you try to do something that's already fixed, then you're trying to repair. Oh, you must be putting two things together. And this name, your grace name, your Christian name, already forgiven, is already fixed. Because Christ fixed, sorry about that, Christ fixed the human race. And we know who wins. It'll be Christians. 
and those that follow this side will die like a beast and will get the mark of the beast because they're still too busy buying and selling. You cannot serve God and mammon.